back. Um, in the last video, we wrote a ball class, as you can see uh, up here on the screen, and we taught the ball what it had, so x and y, velocity x, velocity y, and we taught it what it could do, which was display and move itself, uh, and now we're going to look at how we actually can use this class uh, to create instances of a ball. So we're done with the, uh, the ball file, so we can go back to the, the regular uh, main file with the setup and the draw loop. Um, and so first what we're going to do is, um, let's just start by creating a single ball, uh, and then we'll move on to more. So up here, we can declare a ball, just like we said int x, right, int x or y, we can say ball v, because ball is now a type of data, we just taught processing what a ball is. So we can say ball v, and then here in setup, we're then able to create a new ball, kind of just like it sounds, it's just creating a new instance of that class. Uh, and if you go back to our constructor, there weren't any arguments, so we don't have to uh, give it anything there. We can just say new ball, which is nice. Uh, and then in draw, let's have it um, display itself every frame, and then also move itself. Or maybe we should move it before it displays. It doesn't really matter. But... So let's see how that, um, how that looks. So we have a ball, a singular ball, and he's, he's moving across the screen, and it appears to be doing exactly what... Um, our original sketch was doing, except now this one is, is object-oriented. And you'll notice like how nice this looks in, in, the, main, um, in the main loop, uh, where we really have much less code, and most of it is in the other ball file, uh, but you have to admit this looks pretty clean, and it's very easy to understand. We have b equals new ball, so we're just creating a new bouncing ball, and then every time we draw a frame, we just move the ball, b.move, and we display the ball. Uh, that's super easy to read and understand, and this is one of the great advantages of using object-oriented programming. Um, all right, so let's experiment with um, having more than one ball, because this is great, but it does exactly what we did before. So we want to uh, explore this new functionality that we have. So to do that, we're going to want to create an array, right? Uh, and the way we can do that is similarly to just declaring ball b, we can say ball, and then with some square brackets, um, let's say bouncing balls, because this will be an array. So we'll declare that up there, and then within setup, we can say bouncing balls equals new ball. Actually, we can do this. Uh, we can do this up there. I bet. Let's just do that. Um, up here, we can say equals new ball, and that's going to say it's a new array of bouncing balls, and we want to tell how many we want. So uh, let's just start off with ten. Let's just see what that looks like. So that's going to say I want an array of bouncing balls, and I want there to be ten of them but we still haven't told it to create individually those 10 instances of the bouncing ball. So that's what we're going to do up here in, uh, in setup, and I'll just get rid of this uh, previous code. So what we're, we're going to do, what we're going to want to do is uh, iterate over um, this array of bouncing balls that doesn't have anything in it, and then actually instantiate the, the ball objects. So the way we're going to do that is with um, a for loop. So a for loop looks like this. I'll just write an example one real quick. Um, so for i equals 0, i is less than the length of this array that we're looking at. And we're going to increment i each time. So all a for loop does is it gives us a variable that uh, steadily increases or can decrease or do whatever you want. Um, but in this case, it gives us a variable that allows us to look at every position in a list of things. Uh, so when we access bouncing balls and then square brackets i, that's going to give us the ith bouncing ball. So it'll give us the first one, and then the second one, and then the third. So eventually we'll look at all of them. And what we're going to want to do here is, just like we did with b equals a new ball, we're going to want to say bouncing balls at the i position equals a new ball. So we're going to create a new ball. We don't have to give it anything. Uh, and that's exactly uh, what that needs to do. So create all the bouncing balls. And then, just like we did with b.display and b.move, we're going to want to iterate over all the bouncing balls that we have in this list every time we draw a frame, and we're going to want to display all of them and move all of them. So instead of using the for loop like the one uh, like the one I wrote there, there's a slightly easier syntax uh, that's a bit easier to read that we can use for this. So we can say ball b, and then a colon, which uh, just tells us to take every ball that's in this array uh, in bouncing balls, and then we can simply say b.move and b.display, just like we did before with the singular uh, bouncing ball b. And that will say, for each ball, display and move. So this is basically it. We have our array of 10 bouncing balls that we declared at the top. In setup, uh, we 
instantiated each of those ball objects. So each one got a random x and y position, and each one got a random velocity. So it has properties now. And then within draw, every time a frame is drawn, we are moving every ball and we're displaying all of them. So let's check out what that looks like. See how it changed. So it looks like everything is uh, functioning properly. We have, uh, it seems to be 10 uh, bouncing balls, and they're all bouncing. They're clearly all displaying themselves since we see a bunch of ellipses on the screen, and they're definitely moving, uh, and they appear to be bouncing off the window just as we would, uh, as we would want. So this is a, a very powerful thing. Um, we have created 10, but we could create 50, or we could create 100 even, so we can see what that looks like. It might get crazy. Yeah, so that's pretty, that's pretty intense, but um, we can also redraw the background each frame, which might make it a bit easier to, to look at. Let's look at that. Yeah, so we have 100 bouncing balls. And this is something that really, it, it would have been possible to do without object-oriented programming. It would have been very slow and complicated and tedious. Uh, we would have had to have managed many, many variables, about 100 variables, or we would have had to do it with arrays, uh, which can still get confusing uh, and, and just disorganized uh, very quickly. So the object-oriented design gives us a very streamlined way of sort of compacting all these properties of something that we've made up in our head, the, the bouncing ball, right? into a singular uh, class, a singular cookie cutter, uh, from which we're able to actually create many, many instances, even a hundred instances uh, of that object that we've sort of just dreamed up in our mind. So this is a very cool and very powerful thing. I invite you to uh, try changing the, the style of this sketch and, and incorporating colors just like we did with the other one, uh, and just kind of take this and run with it, because there are a lot of places we can go now that we can sort of generalize this whole idea of a bouncing ball and, and create many instances of it.